What up, Terrapins? Welcome to another episode of Turtle Wandering. This week, I'm preparing for something a little bit different, a bit of a personal challenge, something I've never done before, which is a six-hour endurance trail run slash hike. I'm pretty much going to be hiking, walking it with maybe a little bit of jogging mixed in, but it's going to be an event where I have six hours to do as many laps as I can. Um, at this scout reservation about an hour from here. Each of the laps is four and a half miles. Uh, you do have a spot where it's like you can stop and get gear or refuel, things like that. But again, it's a matter of how many laps you can do. So it's, it's a loop race, which is nice. But again, I've never done anything like that in regards to like hiking or anything. I've done some endurance mountain bike racing, although most of my mountain biking was more what we call cross country. So it was a closed short distance. Um, so this is going to be really different for me. So right now I'm starting to get things together, starting to uh, pack up all my nutrition and what I'm going to do with that. And then I'll start getting my gear together. And then I'm going to head to the race area tonight so that I can get a decent night's sleep. And that way I'm only going to be about 10 minutes from the race in the morning. When preparing for events like this, it's really helpful to create a list for yourself so that you don't accidentally forget something that you need. Back in my mountain biking days, I knew plenty of people who looked up and forgot to bring a helmet or their shoes to a race and then were scrambling to try to borrow something from somebody. Uh, first and foremost, I always want to think about my hydration because bottom line is that you can go much longer without food than you can without liquid. So I want to think about that. So my primary uh, hydration is going to be water and it's I've already got some inside of my pouch here which will go in my hydration vest later on. And this is just water uh, mixed with a couple of propel sticks. I tend to like a little bit of flavor in my water, but I will also then have a separate bottle of water that is just plain water. So if I'm just like, I just want something clean in my mouth, I can do that. And then for electrolytes, I have the Gatorade Zero here. Um, again, just something a little bit different. This will be something that I'll drink maybe like between laps as opposed to on trail. On trail, I'll focus on water for the entire time. And then also between laps, um, I have these small cans of Pepsi and I was able to score the ones with real sugar. Um, not that it makes a huge difference, but I just happen to like the ones with real sugar. They taste a little bit better to me as opposed to, and then after the event, I may drink one of these small cans because these are just the tiny little guys. Um, and then I also have some um, zero sugar soda is as well so you know again these will kind of be for like after the event and then when thinking about my food come over here and this is just a mix and I don't know if I'll eat all of these things but I like to kind of hedge my bets because you're never quite sure what you're going to be in the mood for it could be sweet it could be salty um, it could be whatever so I've got some Doritos because Doritos uh, peanut butter filled pretzels are always a great choice um, they've got, you know, the protein of the peanut butter on top of the carbohydrates for the pretzels, and they're just real quick. I could just grab a handful, pop in my mouth, or I'll bring like a little baggie. I can throw some in a bag, and that way if on trail, if I need something, again, super easy for me to do. Likewise for on trail, I've got this small container of almond butter that I can eat on trail, and then this thing called Split, and basically it's a PB&J, and they have a couple different flavors, but the idea that you could either eat one or the other or you can rip off the entire top and then it just kind of folds in half like this. And then literally you're eating a PB&J but without the, the bread. So again, real quick energy while you're on the trail. Then I also then have some M&Ms. I have a combination of this new classic mix that just came out this summer. And then these are not easy to find, but I do enjoy them. They are peanut dark chocolate M&Ms. And if you can find them and you can eat peanuts, amazing way better than even regular peanut M&Ms, which are pretty awesome. And then I have these honey, slinger, honey stinger waffles. And again, quick energy for on the trail. So I'll keep at least one of these in my hydration pouch. I'll keep probably one of the two of these in my hydration pouch and maybe like the, cus the classic mix in my pouch along with some of the peanut, M um, the peanut butter pretzels. And then the rest of this, I'll just kind of keep off of the sidelines for when I'm taking breaks in between my laps. And then this is just my hydration vest. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, these are the ones that are designed specifically for running. So they have similarities to the ones that maybe you might use if you're mountain biking 
or hiking, but they're a little bit thinner of a profile. They've got tons of pockets here. Uh, this is where the water bottles can fit in, either here or here. They've got zippers if you need them. And then on the other side is the spot up here up the top is where the hydration pouch will go, and then it'll come across to the front from the nozzle. And then if I needed to store anything extra, I could do that. So my snacks and things will then go in those containers. So that'll be really nice. And the nice thing is it's going to fit real tight across my body. So as I'm moving, if I'm running or anything, it's not going to bounce around all over the place. It's going to stay uh, super stable. And in addition to the food on trail, I'll also then keep probably at least one neck gaiter with me uh, to use as maybe like an extra headband or something of that nature, wristband if I need to, swat away flies if that's bad enough. And I'll probably also maybe even keep some bug spray in there just in case, but I haven't decided if I'm just going to keep that at base camp or with me actually on trail. All right, I'll check in to the hotel. I'm about 10 minutes from the site. So now to kick back, have some dinner, and then put my feet up and relax and get started for tomorrow. I am excited, nervous, and ready to give this a shot. So I'm um, going to get some rest, and I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning. Guess it's time to get this party started. About 10 minutes in and we've already taken one wrong turn, but hopefully that's the last one for a period or at least for now. Guys, Good job, ladies. And looping around, right? Not turning around at the phone booth. Got it, thank you. So it seems that there was some confusion on the course and the runners all went about 30 minutes out of their way. So thankfully they've all been great sports and then making sure that we make a correct turn so that we don't also end up going 30 plus minutes out of our way. So good thing is you only make that mistake once, but I'm sure for those who are running for time, this is really messing with them. But that's racing sometimes, right? We venture on. Alright, here's the phone booth they keep talking about, and I guess this is the turnaround point for each lap. So we will start go around the booth and then head back down. Look, fast people.
All right, coming towards the finish of lap three. Uh, hopefully by the time I get to the start finish, um, my friend Allison will be there and she's going to do a couple laps and kind of act as a pacer for me. So that'll be nice to have a little bit of uh, company. My friend Allison right there pacing me along. Somebody's got to drag my butt around this course after a while. Such enthusiasm. <sighs> Bonus miles for the win. Oh, this is gonna hurt when we're done. You said your keys are in which pocket? Uh, they're in one of these two, one of these two side pockets. All done. Uh, Allison got me to do one more lap and uh, so finished with 16 miles in just over six hours. Um, Woohoo! Yeah. I'm beat. So yeah, I'm, I'm beat. There's not much more to say about that. <laughs> so. Got a pretty cool finisher's medal. Finishing the event. A few more steps than my normal 15,000 a day. Good morning, everybody. Uh, next day, actually overall feeling pretty good. Uh, calves were certainly a bit sore this morning. Uh, shoulders were a little bit sore, but as a whole, I can't really complain. It seemed that the stretching and stuff that I did last night really helped along with all the conditioning that I've been doing. Uh, what I'm doing now is just taking a shorter walk, so doing what is known as um, active recovery. And if you're not familiar with the idea of active recovery, it's the idea that you're still doing an effort, just not as intense as what you were maybe doing for your big effort, maybe like the day before or whatever. And the uh, idea behind active recovery is the fact that it like flushes out things like lactic acid and actually helps your body recover faster. So if you're somebody who's done something like really big the day before, even if like you do like a big yard work day, you know, I know a lot of my friends are really into gardening and stuff, that if that's what happens and the next day you're super sore, what you should do is instead of just like sitting on the couch all day, do something active. So maybe do like some mild gardening or something with some similar muscle groups so that uh, you actually get past some of that soreness a lot faster than you would otherwise. So definitely try active recovery as opposed to being like completely static recovery. Overall, the event was a lot of fun and it was a really great test of all the conditioning and fitness that I've gained in the past year. As we're slowly moving our way, out of the pandemic, it was nice to get out and go play someplace different and really just kind of test myself. It really reminded me of the fun I used to have when I was still racing mountain bikes. Now that I know I can go for six hours straight, I'll start working towards the Mammoth March, which is 12 hours and 30 miles at the end of August. This wraps up this week's episode of Turtle Wandering. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.